church. In the Bible, the church makes mention. So in the Bible, the church is being mentioned as the bride of Christ. It means that God honors that you, Adam and Eve, come together as a family. God honors that union. But the world as a whole, society as a whole, government as a whole, does not put value on the institution as God intended and as Calvary recommended. But God is still God. And God is in the enabling business because when it comes to marriage, really, you deal with two individuals. And if two individuals are broken, it's trouble. If one individual is broken, it's trouble. But if God put the institution together, God can fix the institution. Because our God is a fixer of our God. He's a way of making things worthwhile and changing the course of things. Say it's where I am standing, where you're sitting, you all look lovely. You all look like you have it together. Amen. And I, I like the look of defiance, because the look of defiance is really a smile. The spot of what things sounds like, looks like, or feels like, when you have a smile, is a look of defiance that you're still here. Come on, show your teeth to your neighbor, man. Whether they're yours, they're borrowed, or they're purchased, show them. You got a grill or a gap or a cavity, show them. Show off your teeth. It's yours. You owned it. You got it. No one else wants it. It's yours. Come on. One day you're going to want to have some. Or now you're smiling. Hey, lady, look, Sister Fiona, I know you have teeth. I know you have teeth. That's it. That's it. That's it. Amen. If you can't have fun in the house of the Lord, you're in the wrong place. If you're in a church where they don't smile, run for your life and run quick. You got that, Mama C? Run quick. Amen. Because with the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. Can you clap your hands for Jesus? Finally, turn your Bibles to Matthew 16. Will I build 
my church. I'm hearing a voice of defiance. Are you hearing it too? Upon this rock, I will build my church at the gates. Preach this with me. And the gates of hell shall not prevail Okay, if you know this, clap your hands or stand to your feet and give God some praise. If you know the God that you feel like He's able to, He's able to. Why don't you just stand up and just worship God from now? Thank God for the word from now. Because God is going to do something. Just thank Him for the word. Father, I thank you for the word. I thank you for the deliverance. I thank you for speaking to my heart and speaking to my condition and speaking to my circumstance. And we know, dear Lord, that I'm going to be, we are going to be better off when the word is finished than how we began in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands for victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you. If I may be so bold, to put a title on this morning's message. It shall be entitled Rock Solid. Rock Solid. Brother Marcus Lagos, please turn up the phone right there for you for me. Rock Solid. Jesus met with his disciples. Jesus met with his followers. Jesus met with his brothers. Jesus met with his partners for three and a half years. It was them and Jesus on the sea, on the land, on the mountain where Jesus was. They, there, they were. Where Jesus was, they were. Sometimes Jesus took only three of them with the for particular purposes. There's a time when he gathered all of them together. But they were with Jesus of the mountain, on the sea, on the land. Jesus is, that's where they wanted to be. But although there was a close positioning by, by proximity between them and Jesus, there was still a different level of commitment towards Jesus. We can be following people for a long time and a long time journey, but it doesn't really mean that we are with them, and people could be following you on all facets of life, but it doesn't mean that they are really with you. They're with you by proximity. They're with you because they are employers with you. They're with you because they're family members, and you're tied by blood, but it doesn't mean that they are really with you. It also doesn't mean that they really know you. Hello, it doesn't mean that they really know you the way you want them to know you. But they are following you. But God has one objective for people in the following, and that's that the people be rock solid. Rock solid. Rock solid in the faith. Rock solid in their belief. Rock solid in their character. Rock solid in their attitude that despite what things are happening in their life, they're still going to be who they are supposed to be. Challenges will come. Circumstances will come. Setbacks will come. But we are supposed to remain rock solid. The strength does not come in ourselves, but the strength comes into the rock. And when you have the rock on the inside, when you know the rock is holding you up, when you know that when all life is turning all against you and that you can go to the rock, you have a reason to smile, you have a reason to persevere, you have a reason to go forward. Now Jesus and his disciples went out to the towns of Caesarea for the And on the road Asked his disciples, saying to them, Who do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, some said, Elijah, some said, and others, one of the prophets. Because you see, when it comes to ourselves and people, we are opinionated people. Opinionated people, and based on the opinion, based on our own facts and assessments and judgments, we deem people to be 
who they are and we deem us and they deem us to be who we are based on that which they see. But seeing is one thing, knowing is another. Can I say don't get caught up with what you see? Get caught up, church, with what you know. Don't get caught up with what you've heard. Get caught up with what you know to be true and what you know to be real and what you know to be right. But when, when Peter assessed things, he said, you are the Christ. The city of Caesarea of Philippi was on the southwestern slope of Mount Hermon. And the northernmost extent to Jesus' ministry. The northernmost extent, as far as he could go to the north, the full extension that was Jesus' ministry, the full extension. You see, I'm going back to the marriage, but one of the reasons why certain marriages are in trouble is because the full extension of Jesus is not there. You can go certain parts of the distance, but unless you're going all the way out, you can't see the fullness of Almighty God. So at this peak, at this perch, at this position in Jesus, ask the question, why that place? You see, Jesus could have been alone with his disciples outside of the domain of Herod, the ruler of Galilee, and within the area of Philip. The population was not Jewish, so Jesus could teach the twelve in peace. Now here on the roadside, outside of this valley, Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I am? It is interesting where Jesus chose to ask this question, for there are few areas in the world with more religious associations than Caesarea Philippi. It was a place crowded with religion, a place crowded with different beliefs. And on that place, in, in other words, what Jesus said, in the midst of gods, who do people say that? In the midst of supremacy and spirits, uh, who do men say that I am? In the midst of all that which is worship, whether it be a person, place, or thing, where do I fall? I, myself, am asking you and myself the question. In the midst of all that is going on in your life, in the midst of people, in the midst of places you don't want to go, but you're there. In the midst of things that have crept up suddenly on your life. Who is God to you? Caesarea Philippi is one of the most pleasant sites in Israel. It is on a terrace, 1,150 feet high, overlooking a fertile valley. It is a place of beauty and riches. It is also an area scattered with temples of ancient Syrian Baal worship. Historians have listed at least 14 different temples in that place. And it was beneath the shadow of ancient gods. In the midst of religion and beliefs of who God is to them. They ask the question, who do people say that I am? But then he goes in deeper and asks the question, who do you say I am? Because whoever we say God is, that's who he is. If you want to look at Jesus as simply the creator, that's all he will be to you. If you look at 
Jesus as simply the Son of God. That's how he's going to look to you. If you look at Jesus as a Mary, a Jewish man, that's how he's going to be to you because Jesus will not be anything less than how you place him to be. But Jesus wants you to look at him the way Peter looked at it. In the midst of the religion, in the midst of people's belief, in the midst of all those that Jesus was called on to declare Jesus. He said it's not a matter of who people think you are. It's a matter of who you are. Oh, hallelujah. It's a matter of who you are. If you know Jesus to be the Christ, you know him to be the anointed one. If you know Jesus to be the Christ, you know that he's been the called out one. If you know Jesus to be the Christ, you're not looking to him as an organization, but you're looking to him as life. Oh, God Almighty. You're looking to him as truth. You're looking to him as hope. You're looking to him as deliverance. In the midst of all of this, Hallelujah. He was revealed to Peter that I don't care what anybody says about you. I know you to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, in the midst of all that's around us, there's only one God that's living. There's only one God that's life. There's only one God that's sustaining. There's only one God that's prevailing. There's only one God. And this is the God that we're called upon to worship. This is the God we're called upon to believe. It's the God that we're called upon to honor. That one, the Christ, the Son of the living God. I'm here to tell you that Baal is dead. I'm here to tell you Confucius is dead. I'm here to tell you that man will die. But this Jesus died and rose again. Oh, our Jesus is hope. Our Jesus is life. He said, I come that you might have life and have it more that they rock solid. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, look at me, Son. Flesh and blood could not have given this to you. But this came from heaven. And let me tell you something. You told me about me. I will tell you about you. You are named Peter. Peter is a pet. Are you hearing me? It's a rock, but it's a pebble. He said, like, this is who you are at best. You are a pebble. You are a breaking point off the rock. That's what you are. You are a chip of the rock, but the chip cannot save. The chip cannot deliver. The chip cannot redeem. You see, that's what we look for. You're looking for the best of man. And man's nothing but a chip. Man's nothing but a pebble. But I urge you to take your eye off the pebble and look at Christ. Take your eyes off the pebble and look at the rock. It's amazing how we allow our pebble to block us. It's amazing how we allow our pebble to stumble us. It's amazing we allow a pebble to set us away. But the rock remains the rock. Somebody wrote a song of oh, Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. His home is covered in his blood. Supports me in the whelming flood. Oh, why are you standing on this morning? If you're standing on the rock, solid rock, and you know the power that you've got, Satan, you can't prevail. A lot of us in church, we have a pebble mentality. That's the problem with us. A pebble mentality. The Bible said that there was a man, and a foolish man built his house upon the sand. You see, the sand is a breakdown of the rock. Oh, no. Sand is a breakdown of the rock. And you must understand why a breakdown because when we don't place the rock to beat the rock that's what happens church of God you can't get the rock and sand it down and fight it down to do you your God can't be the way you want to be your God has to be the way he's supposed to be that's the problem with the world you we take God for the way we want to take him so I'll take God on Sunday but I won't on Monday. Are you hearing me? But this is a comprehensive God that we serve. And this comprehensive God must be served comprehensively.
get handsome today. Or else you're going to get a pebble. And the pebble's going to turn to sand. But we're not having the rock placed the way he's supposed to be. Upon this rock. Mm. Not upon the pebble. But upon the rock. You kick the pebble and the pebble goes flying. But you can kick the rock. But the rock will remain the rock. And you will remain wounded. That's why I encourage everybody not to mess with the church. Don't mess with Zion. Because when you mess with the church, the rock messes with you. Too much time, people have a way of mocking the church. People backslide and they walk out of church. And they want to say all bad of things about the church. What is that? The church is not the door. People, uh, the church is the people, uh, and the people are alive. Uh, I may be sick, but I'm alive. Uh, I never breathe the apparatus, but I'm alive. Uh, sometimes it looks like the church is in a coma, uh, but the church is still alive. Uh, church of God, we're alive uh, because Jesus is alive and well. Uh, tell the devil uh, that he's going to die, uh, he's going to hell, uh, but the church will remain the church. Uh, the people will remain the church. Uh, the people are blessed. not a thing the world can do about it. You're blessed because you're on the rock. You're blessed because you're founded upon the rock. Oh, your father is founded upon the rock. So don't let the devil tell you that you're nothing but a pebble. You see, this is what's happening to the mentality of people. We who are believing ourselves to be pebbles. And when you believe, that wherever you believe yourself to be, that's who you are in your mind. It doesn't matter what anybody tells you about yourself. That's who you are. I'm here to tell you that you need to look in your mirror and understand you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You need to understand that although you're going through a life in a rough time in your life, it's not so much the rough time in your life. Yeah, no matter where you go in your life, Jesus is with you. He's making you solid. When you can't feel it, you can't go on. When you feel it, you can't get up. There's the rock underneath you pushing you up. And when you're up, it's the rock upon you having you stay up. And when you move from stage to stage, it's the rock revering itself as a step for you to go higher and higher in life. Understand the rock is there to change you. The rock is there to deliver you. The rock is there to make a way out of you. It's all about the rock. Worship the rock. Worship Jesus. Worship your creator. Worship your savior. The rock upon this rock I will build my church. Empowering 
agent for our lives. Oh, hallelujah. When things are dark in your life, put the empowering agent upon it. Oh, Lord. A lot of us think that the anointing is oil. Hallelujah. But the will is a symbol of the Holy Ghost. And that's what makes things happen. That's what makes things go forward. It's not the human manifestation, but the divine revelation through manifestation and application upon our lives. When all is looks like we're just not going to go, when it looks like we're not going to succeed, when everything is going backward, the anointing of God, hallelujah, destroys the yoke and sets the chapter free. What's keeping us alive, hallelujah, is the fact that Jesus is alive and well. Oh God, the grave does not have the last say. Sinless does not have the last say. Circumstances does not have the last say. Worry does not have the last say. Anxiety does not have the last say. Jesus has the last say. The Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last, which is, which was, and which is to come. Jesus, the Savior of the world. Jesus, the Lord. Jesus, the King. Jesus to hide in place. Let's get rid of this sad mentality that we have uh, and put God in his proper place. Uh, when you put God in his proper place, things have a way of going forward. I told my wife, uh, she goes, don't you see the things that we're going through? Yes, I said, I see what we're going through, are going through. But there's something that we must understand that it's not the picture of things, it's the frame. Uh, I don't care how pretty things look. I don't care how ugly the picture. It's the frame that's holding us up. Church of God, we got a foundation that can't crack. We got a foundation that can't chip. We got to have a foundation that can't be rubbed away. For over 2,000 years, Jesus died. But the church is alive. People are being saved. People are being delivered. People are being set free. People are being baptized. People are being filled with the Holy Ghost. People are recovering. Their blind eyes are open. The ears of the deaf are open. The dumb, the lame are walking. That's power. Jesus, the power in the name of the Lord. We need to use the power that we got. Tongues don't move me. Speaking of tongues is not power. Speaking of tongues is the manifestation of God in a heavenly language. Known and unknown. Known and unknown. For all I know, when you're going through your circumstances and you're speaking tongues, people look and say, oh my gosh, he's powerful. In tongues, God understands your interpretation, and you're saying in the spirit, God, I'm afraid. But the power of God is the God revealing, repairing, and restoring. When we underestimate the rock, we leave ourselves bound. When we underestimate the rock, we leave ourselves in turmoil. When we put the pebble of our troubles in front of the rock, the pebble overrides the rock. Peter, oh God said to Peter, listen, I'm calling the God in you. I'm calling you to rock faith. Let me tell you something. God sees us in our pebbled state, in our sanded state, and it looks as if we're something that was nothing. We were once something that was nothing. But I'm here to tell you that God made something out of nothing. And if God can repair, put the world in place, God can fix me. He can fix my condition. He can fix my children. He can fix my marriage. He can fix my health. Put him where he belongs and watch what will happen in your life. As God will allow him to reveal things. But there's certain times in the scripture where we see that Jesus revealed things. And Peter said, no Lord. 
is not just like us. One minute we sing a song, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I say, yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you every day. And by the benediction, you say, no, Lord, not that way. Lord, you made a mistake. Lord, why me? From the rock to the sand. How many times do we have leadership leading us in place to bring us higher, but instead we hold up the work by our own belief system, our own ideologies, and the way we think things are supposed to be done. And your shepherds are placed in your life to usher you towards your destiny. That happens when you put the problem in front of the rock. Living in the area of baptism, you're rushing to work, you know, traffic can build up. And just when you think you're going on good, you see a pile, row by row, of geese coming through and holding you up. And you can't move. And they're taking their sweet time to pass. Their sweet time. Labor, your wife could be in labor and stop moving there. They're staying right there, going their own pace. What? The vehicle could run them over. The vehicle's the rock, but the pedal. And you're watching the pebble hold you up. That's what we do when we don't realize what we have in God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. How can a mess? How can a pebble mess with a mountain? Why is this pebble so big and the mountain so minuscule? Because it's based on our perception. And our perception is our reality. What you deem it to be, that's what it is in your mind. And in your actions. The pebble mentality works against the plans of God for your life and the work of God in your life by asking the question what is your pebble? What's your sand? Where's your God in the midst of this? Where is the rock? In the midst of all that you're going through, God wants to build you up. The Greek word for build is oikodomio. Oikodomio, which means not just to build, but to restore and repair. Jesus is not merely the tools. He does not merely have the tools or have the materials. Jesus is the tool and he is the material Enclosing a general contractor is in charge of all aspects of the building, the repairing, the restoring, and the beautification. Can we allow the general contractor of our lives to build us, to fashion us, to establish us, stand to your feet and be 
The general contractor is a landscaper, the plumber, an electrician, a painter, an interior decorator. All these facets. Jesus wants to be in your life. All of these facets. He wants to be your last. To take on all the weeds, the negativities. That keeps growing and growing and growing the flaws in your life. It looks as if it's taking over the mask, taking over your life. And he wants to kill everyone and restore him. As a plumber, he wants to come along and get rid of all that is clogged in your life. Some of us struggle with unforgiveness. We struggle with malice. We struggle with anger and anxiety. And it gets the best of us. Allowing the people to win the formation of a mountain in our life. A mountain that you can't climb. A mountain that you can't move. A mountain that you can't go through. You can't go around it. It's right there. But he wants to run calm. And have the right things running in your life. Joy running in your life. Peace running in your life. Hope running in your life. Joy running through your life. What's clogging you up? For believing that God is able. What's clogging you up? For functioning the way you're supposed to function. This, you want to be a painter in your life. The colors of your character. The colors of your personality. The colors of your world. You can't see things bright. You see things so dark. That this is as good as it gets. Suffering is as good as it gets. Loss is as good as it gets. You're looking at other people and you say, everybody else is prospering except me. God wants to change the color of your life. As an interior decorator, he wants to beautify you from the inside. The inside. For change to come, it comes from the inside. Some of you don't need to leave the job that you're in, the career that you're in, the church you're in, the wife you have, or the husband you have. You just need to change yourself. When you take oneness of yourself, things change. A wife told her husband, I want to leave you. I want to run from my life from you. The husband said, you can run. You can run. But remember, you're taking your head with you. You're taking all your thoughts with you. You're taking all your negativity with you. So you're, you're not running anywhere by yourself. Because when your mind is not at ease, it remains ill ease. But Jesus wants to change the inside of you and make you see things the way God intended. Calvary recommended. Lastly, this general contractor named Jesus wants to be an electrician in your life. 
you can't feel God the way you're supposed to feel. Because the Christ is down. There's no charge. Nothing is pulsating. Nothing is vibrant. Remain in the dark. Jesus said, upon this love, this truth, this revelation, this authority, this association, this alignment, I will build you and make you new. Is there one that's in need of the rock? There's a one that needs a change that only Christ himself can give. I'm going to call you up here to pray for you. When you see God the way he's supposed to be seen, you don't look, you don't look at you don't look who's around you. You, you, just, you, just, you just go because you know that you can't get any other help outside of God. Can we take that Leap of faith. Say, outside of these parameters, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Outside of these parameters, I'm going to serve you. Outside of all that I think I know and that which I thought I knew. I'm going to have you take control. I'm up on a hill, Lord, and I'm looking around. And I don't know the way. I don't even know how I got here and what's in your But I'm here. And in order for me to leave this place that I'm in, I need you to deliver me. Because this heaven has become this mountain cannot be moved by my own. So I'm coming to you, dear God, to bring forth the change that's needed in my life. God, I'm hurting. I'm hurting. Lord, it's so deep at times that you know you're hurting. But some of us hurt so long that we don't even know why we are hurt. Pain has become chronic. Loss has become chronic. This pleasure, oh God, has become chronic. This placement has become chronic. And I gotta do all these things and be all that I'm supposed to be. As if I'm not hurt, but I'm hurt. As if I'm not bleeding, but I'm bleeding. I'm supposed to be independent, but I am depending on you, God, to change me, to change my circumstance, to change my life. us to cry, but sometimes pain doesn't cause us to, to do anything because we're so numb. She said, oh, I need to pray with you and your daughter. I need to pray with you and your daughter. Please come.
I need her. God, she's that rhythm thing. Everything. And there's no surprise with God. Because the moment he sees your house, seeing your children, nothing is missing him. When you were sleeping, he's watched you. And he knows what's going on in your head. The rest of the night, he's still sleeping. And we live on chips too long. And we've settled for pebbles too long. Made the sand our bed too long. But Jesus is the song when we feel that we can't sing anymore. Hallelujah. Jesus is the hope when we feel that we just can't cope. When we see no reason to trust him, he's the thread to hold on and to remain going forward. I want you to hug him, brother. God sees everything. The devil wants to destroy your family.
rock solid. Jesus. Oh Jesus, rock solid. Rock solid. God is going to build. He's going to fix. He's going to repair. You're going to better and not bitter. Bitterness is your friend. You swallow bitterness. You taste it. Bitterness. Jesus. Jesus, Lamb of God. But no more bitterness. No more bitterness. No more bitterness. God will turn sorrow into joy. He's the rock. 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 It doesn't matter who chip off the rock. The rock, the rock, the rock will give you strength. The rock will give you hope. The rock will give you deliverance. The rock, the rock, the rock. Oh, hallelujah. The rock, the rock, the rock. Hallelujah. Come on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Anoint them for me. Anoint them for me. Anoint them for me. Anoint them for me. You all are anointed. I need church to stand to your feet. I need church to stand in our own hands. And hold hands, hold hands, hold hands, hold hands. You're going to be dismissed early. Work with me, church. Work with me, work with me. It may not be you up here, but you never know when your turn will come. And you're going to need somebody to lean on. Come on, come on, come on. Believe for somebody in your life. Somebody that's only really even yourself who do not have the, the guts or the courage to come up here. Look to God. Jason James Walker by name. 
follow tragedy and loss is something that is not unfamiliar. But dear God, you're familiar with him. And as he renewed his life with you, dear Lord, and making a stand of not just a man and a man of God, I pray in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, that you will prosper him. I pray that as his heart is knit and in tune with yours, I pray, dear Lord, those things in secret that he's asking for you to do in his life, that you will fulfill it openly, dear God, that there will be testimonies upon testimonies of you doing wondrous things because you are the solid rock in which we stand and all of the ground is sinking sand. Father, I put my sister before you. A young woman, dear God, that has rich convictions of you. Dear God, she should have lost her mind. She should have lost her joy. But God, she's still here. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you remind her, dear God, that she is not alone. The journey that you take her over and over again, dear Lord. Dear God, sometimes life has been being so monotonous. Huh? But dear Lord, let her, let God, pray you give her the miraculous within the monotonous. You know her heart, dear Lord. The devil desires to sift her as wheat. And to sift her, dear Lord, is to sift her family. It's to wipe out a nation, oh God. But we come against every force of evil. We come against every force of darkness. We come against every spirit that exalts itself against the most high God. Bring about that which she needs, dear Lord. Bring her to her purpose, dear Lord. There's so much, dear Lord, invested in her, dear Lord. So much invested in her. But as my hand is upon her hand, and her hand is upon her heart, I pray in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, that she will recertify a pledge, a commitment to you to do your will. Father, ministries are locked up inside of her. And dear God, how can she sing a song in a strange land? How can she have a song in strange conditions? How can she have a song, dear Lord, when the devil desires to stifle her voice from worshiping you, from praising you, by causing provocation to be, oh dear Lord, that more than praise, but in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, that your rebellious movement will be upon her heart, that she will function, dear Lord, as a minister of thine, because she's yours. Every condition, every care, every fear, every anxious moment, every apprehension, take full control and speak to her, dear Lord. Let her hear you divinely, your voice over all voices. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, of me. Gracious Lord and Father, tender-hearted Savior, you know all that's needed. Oh God and Mama, you know that all that's needed in my news. Father, there are questions in the heart, situations in the heart that only you can fix, only you can repair, only you can heal. So we're looking at you, there ought to be nothing less than who you are this day, this morning. Father, there's so much spoken requests and unspoken requests, dear Jesus. We're asking you, dear Lord, to even the playing field. Let there be testimonies, dear Lord, of deliverance, dear God. Have their hearts come to a place, dear Lord, where they can boldly say, dear Lord, that they decided to follow you, Jesus. No turning back. We look to you, dear God, to do all that you can. We thank you for the blessings upon their lives. Let them see themselves in a blessed vessel of honor. In your eyes, dear Lord. In Jesus' name. Here. Mm. 
Hallelujah. The circle here. And it can't, it cannot be broken. Come with me. Come with me. Come with me. Hold my shoulders. Hold my shoulders. Hold my shoulders. Hallelujah. And there's, there's a circle here. Can't be broken. Can't, can't be broken. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am covering them. Hallelujah. In your power. I am covering them in your authority. Oh, as I am round about them, let goodness and mercy come round about them, that no form of evil will come nigh their dwelling. I pray in the name of Jesus, every apprehension that wants to exalt itself will be abased. That is not my power. Amen. Give God praise in this place. 